What is up guys? Welcome or welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, my name is Rachel. My husband and I have been traveling full time in our renovated camper, but we're currently taking a little break, which you can probably tell because uh, I'm not currently in a camper. I'll explain more about where we are, what we're doing, our future plans in an upcoming video, but today I'm answering some of your top RV life questions. So these are questions that we received a few weeks ago, both here on YouTube and over on Instagram. So if you're not following us over on Instagram as well, be sure to check us out at Working for the Wild. I didn't get to every single question, but I tried to make a list of the ones that we get asked most often or the ones that I think are the most compelling questions. So I'm gonna start with some questions that we received here on YouTube. Question number one, how do you plan your routes slash campgrounds and how far in advance do you plan? I really don't have a short answer for this, but what I will say is for the past six months, we broke up our travels into basically two separate itineraries, two separate general routes. So over the summer from the end of May until the end of August, I had one itinerary planned for everything that we were gonna do. And I had like one spreadsheet just for that. Then I had a separate itinerary for the entire fall. So September until basically now. So I broke it down that way, but then I went in and did more specific planning for different regions, figured out, okay, what are the must see places, must do activities that we wanna make sure we check out. And then I'll sort of plan our itinerary around those things. So for example, if there is like a national park that we really wanna visit, I would plan our itinerary around that visit and find some place for us to be for the work week nearby, if that makes any sense. And in terms of how I find campgrounds, I use a number of different apps, Campendium, the Dirt, that's with a Y, D-Y-R-T, iOverlander, uh, RV Life, sometimes I'll even just use Google, and different apps are better for different parts of the country. For example, if you're like looking specifically for free public land, you're not gonna find a lot of that out east, so you should probably just be looking for campgrounds. Oh, and something I should note is I don't book campgrounds super, super far in advance. I think the farthest out I've ever booked is like, maybe three weeks, maybe not even that much, maybe just two weeks. I like to leave as much flexibility as possible when planning our routes because plans change so often. And if something comes up and we wanna go somewhere else, I wanna make sure we're not like tied to a place because we paid $300 to stay there for the week. Once I do have destinations nailed down, I put them in that spreadsheet that I was talking about. So I have where we're going, the mileage from our previous destination, where we're staying, the cost, any activities that we're doing so I can keep track of everything in one place. Okay, that was a really long answer to question number one. I'll try to keep it a little more concise. Question number two, what factors does traveling with dogs contribute to your planning? To be honest, not much. We have never left out a destination or cancel an activity because we travel with our two dogs, which if you're new here, our two dogs are Luna and Lady. Luna is an almost 11 year old lab mix and Lady is a two year old black lab and she's crazy. So they're pretty big dogs. Um, it doesn't really stop us from doing anything. You certainly have to consider it, um, but we never let it hold us back. The biggest things are you really have to consider the weather. For example, if you are boondocking somewhere and it's 90 degrees outside, you can't leave your dogs if you can't run your AC in your rig. You know what I mean? If you wanna go do something that isn't dog friendly. If there ever was a time that we we're like, okay, it's gonna be super, super hot out. We wanna go do this. We can't bring the dogs to hot springs in uh, Stanley, Idaho. What are we gonna do? In that case, we either had to find a place um, that had an electrical hookup where we could plug in the camper so we could run our AC, or we would just bring them, leave them in the truck with the AC running. And if you want some more information about RVing with dogs, I do have a full video up on that that I will link right here for you. Question number three, how the heck do both of you and your adorable dogs sleep in one bed and get any sleep? So I think I've talked about this in previous videos that yes, the dogs do sleep with us in the camper. We have a queen, it's a, um, a short queen, but we do have a queen size bed. And yes, the two big dogs sleep with us. Um, it is not comfortable. <laughs> the, the mattress is comfortable, but 
having two dogs in the bed, it's definitely a challenge. Where we are right now, we're sleeping in a king bed and it feels like we have all the space in the world. But the thing is, in our tiny little camper, there just isn't a whole lot of space. So there's really nowhere else for the dogs to go. Like there's not a lot of floor space for them. There's not really a comfortable place that we could put their dog beds in there. So that's why they sleep with us. It's not ideal. All right, question number four. If money was not a problem, what rig would you guys use? Travel trailer, fifth wheel, class A, B, C, etc. I love this question. Nicole and I talked about this after getting this question and we were both totally on the same page. We really like having a tow behind. We like being able to separate our vehicle from our living space, um, but we definitely would want something bigger and nicer. So I think we would want something like a 28 to 31 foot older Airstream. Airstreams are very expensive. <laughs> If you didn't know, we're always keeping our eye out for Airstreams, but uh, I don't know if that is in the cards financially for us, at least not at this point in our lives, but we like the layout of them. Uh, we would definitely want one that we could remodel and make our own. I like doing that kind of stuff. Even if we had the money to buy brand new, I think I personally would still like an older one that we could remodel at least a little bit. Not something that's necessarily falling apart, but long story short, it would be a larger Airstream that's a little bit older. Question number five, what is the story behind your decision to travel full time? I feel like I'm gonna answer this very long winded. So I'm gonna try to keep it short. I've talked about this on here many times before, but I worked in TV news. I'm a journalist and I worked in TV news for nine years. Uh, most recently in Denver, and I don't think a lot of people know what that career entails. Maybe you have an idea, but I think it's kind of hard to know unless you've lived with somebody who's worked in TV news or you have done it yourself. So you work very strange, long hours, very little time off, low pay, not a lot of flexibility. And I think people have this idea that oh, well, you know, once you make it big, you're not doing that. Or once you've been in it long enough, you're not doing that anymore. No, I mean, you're kind of always working strange hours in some capacity. Not so much the hours, it was just the flexibility issue for me. I felt like I didn't have time to do the things that I wanted to do. And while I really, really loved my career for a long time, I would say about six, seven years in, I started to feel like I just wasn't quite as fulfilled as I had been previously. And Cole was sort of in a transition period as well. He used to be a college track and field coach and um, he transitioned over to working full-time as a travel nurse recruiter, which is a fully remote job in his case. That was a big opportunity for us to explore the RV lifestyle. Also, we fell down the YouTube rabbit hole of full-time travel. So it was a combination of things, watching other couples or other people, who were doing full-time travel on YouTube, on social media. That was a huge inspiration. Feeling like I didn't want to work in TV news anymore. I wanted a total break from that rigid set schedule. And then Cole getting the opportunity to work fully remote with a really good job. All those things just sort of coming together is what pushed us to make the decision to actually try full-time RV life probably should mention this, we love doing outdoorsy things too. Even before RV life, we camped all the time, we did road trips all the time, we hiked a lot living in Colorado. So we like doing outdoorsy things and we figured doing full-time RV life would give us opportunities to do a lot of the things that were on our list, like hiking Half Dome in Yosemite and uh, visiting all the national parks, just, you know, doing all the things. Question number six, ever had an RV park question the year slash model of your camper? People talk about this all the time. Yes, certain campgrounds or RV parks have asked for the year make and model of our trailer, but we've never been turned away because of it. It is a 2007. It looks like it's a 1980 because of the paint job that I put on it. But a lot of campgrounds we have heard have this 10 year rule that anything that's older than 10 years isn't allowed. Never experienced that. We've stayed in some really nice RV parks, really nice campgrounds. Um, we've not run into this. I don't know if it's a regional thing. We have not RV'd in Florida. And I hear that this is a big thing at RV parks in Florida, but we've been to the West. We've been to the East. We've been a little bit in the South. We've been in the Midwest. 
and we have not experienced this. Question number seven, this one made me chuckle. Somebody's asked, I'm terrified of dump stations. Any tips to make the process easier? So fun fact, we never dumped our tanks before we hit the road to travel full time. Like that sounds insane to say what, I don't know what we were thinking. So our first time dumping our tanks was once we started living in the camper full time and it was like five days in. After you do it one time, it's like so not a big deal. It's definitely easier with two people, but we've both done it by ourselves and it's just fine. My top tips would be to make sure everything is secure, the connection that goes into the camper and the connection that goes down into the ground. You wanna make sure it is 100% secure so you don't have any kind of accidents. And tip number two would be to wear gloves. Question number eight, do you miss friends and family? Friends, yes. I think we expected to make more friends on the road than we did just because of how much we were moving, living full time on the road for the past six, seven months. Um, it made it really difficult to make more than surface level introductory connections. So that was tough not having friends around. Family is not so much, not to say we don't miss our family, but uh, I've lived away from my family since I was 18 years old, so I'm pretty used to that. Cole has lived away from family for a while as well, so that wasn't really a shock for us by any means. We're used to being away from them. Um, we're used to having to call them to have that connection, so that wasn't a big deal. But the friends part, yeah, it did get a little lonely sometimes not having that type of interaction. Question number nine, do you have telecommute jobs that provide income? If so, isn't internet a challenge? So I know I already talked about this a little bit. Yes, Cole is a travel nurse recruiter, full-time job, eight to five, does it fully remote. He did that even before we were traveling full-time and it was fully remote then. Um, yes, internet is a challenge. We relied on two Wi-Fi hotspots, that's cellular data. We had a Verizon one and a T-Mobile one. Um, Side note, they were recently stolen, so that's why I'm saying had. They worked fairly well, but we would max them out every single month with both of us working off of them. So even though I don't have a full-time job, I do YouTube, and I also do freelance voiceover work and some other little projects. I also have a full video up about how we work on the road that I'll link here for you to check out. I totally get why so many RVers are going the Starlink route now, even though it is a little more expensive. Um, I hear it's quite reliable unless you're in certain parts of the country uh, where it's not really fully functional yet. Question number 10. After several months on the road, are you guys going to continue full time? Just RV April through December due to ice and cold. Any plans to slow down? So that's three questions in one, but uh, I'll answer all of it. So clearly we're slowing down right now. And if you watched our video from a couple weeks ago of us putting the camper in storage, you'll know that this was always the plan to take a break around the Christmas holiday, to go north to Minnesota where my family is. And this is not an ideal place to leave the camper. Minnesota is not a good place to store an RV. So that's why we left the camper in Kansas where Cole's family is. We're still kind of trying to figure out what type of RVers we want to be six and a half months on the road, moving as quickly as we did. I don't think we want to do that exact thing again. It was just a lot. Ideally, we would like to have a home base somewhere. We don't know when, we don't know exactly where, but we really don't have that right now. And we didn't have that for the past six and a half months. So that's something that um, I think we would look at in the future too. Question number 11, any plan to get a bigger or smaller RV? Uh, we would love to have something larger, especially as I just said, if we're gonna keep traveling and we wanna be able to live and work out of the space, not just go on like weekend trips. Uh, yeah, I think we need something bigger. The size of our rig contributed to a lot of the challenges that we have faced. So yes, something bigger would be fantastic. Uh, ideally something with like a separate workspace where Cole can just go be and not have the distractions of me and the dogs cooking and running around and doing all the things in the main space because our rig is just a room, just a room. And the only door is the bathroom door. So if you want any solitude, you have to go to the bathroom. And I will say we are always looking 
at larger RVs, but when we will get another one, I have no idea. I mean, I couldn't even tell you like, oh yeah, in the next six months or the next year. I really don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. We will see. Question number 12. What has been the biggest surprise, positive or negative, of full-time RVing? I really like this question. Thank you for asking this. And I just talked to Cole about it to get his response to this as well. Biggest positive surprise for me is how well our tiny old little trailer held up towing it more than 20,000 miles in six months. Everyone is always telling us that older RVs are just built better than new RVs. They're more durable, better materials. I've never owned a new RV, so I can't speak to that, but I was pleasantly surprised that ours didn't fall apart, I guess, because we put it through a lot and she is taking a well-deserved break right now. Negative surprises. Uh, the first thing that comes to my mind, and this is pretty general, how exhausting it is to travel full-time. And I know that full-time travel looks different for everybody. So I'm just speaking to our experience and how we did it moving all the time. I mean, in the beginning we were moving like every three days, towards the end we were moving once a week. So that's still a lot. Constantly planning, constantly driving. I mean, I was probably spending 12 to 16 hours a week just on planning. And then our weekends were often taken up by driving. Yeah, it's just tiring. You get tired. And sometimes you just wanna shut your brain off and not have to plan and not have to drive and not have to think about setting up. So it's just a lot mentally. And so that kind of surprised me just because I, I don't know, I love planning. I am 100% a planner and I, it's not like traveling has made me not like planning, totally not the case. But when you're just doing it constantly and you never feel like you get a break, um, yeah, it just makes your brain hurt a little bit. Cole's responses to this, his uh, negative surprise was pretty similar to mine. He said he was really surprised that we never once felt like we were on vacation. Not once since May have we felt that. I think there is a misconception, a huge misconception about RV life that you're just having these grand adventures all the time. And I would find myself getting really frustrated with people who would like call it a trip. Be like, oh, your, your trip, how's your trip going? We're not on a trip. We're not on vacation. We're just living out of something that moves. And on the flip side, uh, something positive that Cole said was a surprise was how inexpensive you can make this lifestyle. I also often hear this idea that RV life is expensive and it can be very expensive if you are staying in certain places or doing it a certain way, but you can also do it for very, very cheap, especially if you're staying in places that have states that have a lot of free public land. You could probably camp for months for free. Obviously you have to do things like get water and dump and do that and that might cost you, but you really can live this lifestyle for very inexpensive. We took advantage of a lot of those uh, cheaper opportunities over the summer. Now out east, <laughs> there is no free public land. Um, there's no such thing as like BLM land. So you're probably gonna be paying a little bit more if you are out east or if you're like in Florida or something, but um, yeah, it, this lifestyle is just what you make of it. And it was really nice to see that, wow, we could go all week without spending any money on anything except groceries. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember to give it a like, drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Uh, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Our videos are gonna be a little sporadic for the next little bit. There will still be at least one a week, sometimes even two a week. I'm still trying to stick to Monday and Friday, but no promises on that. There's just a lot going on right now and I'm excited to share more with you guys in the very near future. So thank you so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one.